Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I'm Greg, this here's Brody. Uh, we're from Pack Break. Want to say hi to everyone? <laughs> Hello. Uh, today, today we're going to give you a little bit of discussion on uh, airbags, why do you want them, what are they good for, and uh, how to know, well not how to know, but a little bit of advice on when the best use case for each airbag is. So when it comes to airbag, airbags in general, when you want them on a truck is as a load assist. Airbags aren't like a takeover. They don't lift the back of your truck, say like with a lift kit. That's not what airbags are for. They will inherently give a little bit of boost to the height of the rear end of your truck because there is a minimum load for airbags. You can never have them below 10 PSI, but that's not what they're for. What they're there for is to give you an assist. So if you're taking your truck every day and you put a bunch of tools in the back, you're hauling around a trailer and you're noticing the back end of your truck is sagged out all the time. You're constantly, when you're driving the truck, you're, it's like you're staring upwards at the sky because the back end is so low. Airbags are meant to give you an assist in the back end of your truck to help you carry that load. So, Brody, you got a little bit more on that? Yeah, what you're aiming for with airbags is you're trying to maintain a level or stock stance of your truck. You don't want to get too far from the factory design right end angle because that's how it's best designed to handle, to break, and you know, a whole bunch of other performance characteristics. Um, one more thing to clarify, these are airbags, not hydraulics. They won't bounce your car around like low riders. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about airbags, uh, the different types we have, and when's the pro what's the proper use for each one of them. So to my left here, I got the sleeve style bag, the single convoluted bag, and the double convoluted bag. So they're all used in a little bit different cases. This one here is a 1,000 pound bag. These two are 2,500 pound bags. So when we use them in kits, we use one per each side. So the load rating for the kits themselves, so a sleeve style kit is gonna be 2,000 pounds, whereas a single convoluted or double convoluted system is a 5,000 pound kit. And the way we generally do this is we look at what the truck can handle itself and we try and optimize what's best for the space within the frame, the length of the bag itself, as you can see this one's a little bit taller, and then can the truck actually handle the load that the bag would? Because we don't want to give someone a bag that can handle much, much more than the truck can because then the ride will be too stiff, the customer will put too much in, in the truck itself and it leads to an unfortunate situation where the customer can exceed the limits of the truck and not understand because the bag will be help carrying the load and it's something that might be skipped. Um, so, Bro, do you want to go over the different uses we have for each bag? Yeah, so when looking at an airbag and trying to choose what's best for you, you have to think about what you plan to do with your truck. If you're barely towing, you use it every now and again to tow your boat to the lake or a trailer for a weekend out camping, and you're not towing too heavy of a load, you may want to consider going something along the lines of a sleeve style. Sleeve style is because of its height and the way it's, and its lighter load. It helps you maintain your maximum suspension travel and provides enough load to assist you in carrying your weekend hauler without making your ride too stiff. That's the problem when you go to these heavier bags in a light truck is they're intended to carry more load, so they add more stiffness to your suspension and you end up getting a rougher ride out of it. If you end up hauling more, you have, to, you have a toolbox in the back or always have work gear in your truck, then you might want to consider going up to the heavier 2,500 pound bags. They're, they're designed to help level your load when you are constantly towing or have a consistent load. Now it's choosing between which height do you want. So that comes down to what kind of truck you drive and how much space you kind of have inside your frame. If you put the double convoluted bag in a space that's too small, you're going to be running this bag under constant compression You'll constantly have more stiffness to your spring and you'll notice a very rough and bumpy ride. That's where you go for the single convoluted bag that's better meant to fit in that smaller space. They both provide the same load though, so they're getting the same benefit out of both. Now your weight rating between the two, it's exactly the same. This will not give you any more load carrying capability than this one. If you put this in an area where this is meant to go, you're just going to notice that your head's hitting the roof a lot more in your truck when you're driving down the highway. And then you're going to be coming back complaining that the heavy bag didn't work so well. 
Yeah, actually, and something we've seen is some of the lighter trucks, so like the Tacomas or actually the newer aluminum F-150s, we have these, these heavier bags in there, but due to the way that they're designed, the space between the leaf pack and the frame is really, really narrow. So we end up having, if we try and put this bag in there, where because higher volume is generally better when it comes to airbags because your spring rate is based on the volume of the bag itself. So how much air is inside the bag. So generally a larger volume is considered better. However, if when you put a bag that's, the free height of this bag is I believe seven and a half inches off the top of my head. And if you put that, but you have it constantly compressed at three inches height, your bag itself is always constantly loaded. And the maximum load you can get out of an airbag is at its shortest height. So if you take a bag like this one and it's at say 30 PSI, whether it's at seven inches versus three inches compressed, at seven inches, the load that you're feeling is much, much less than the load at three inches due to the volume of the bag itself. So if you have a smaller area, like a smaller design height, you go with the single convoluted because you'll have a smaller volume over that height, but it's less compressed. So the load that you're seeing is a little bit less. It's not quite linear between these two bags. So it's, it's a little bit of a workaround to try and get the, pro the, the proper design height. It does take some effort, takes some trial and error. Uh, we, we have had some times in the past where we go with one bag and then put it in a truck and we find that either the ride's too rough with the short one or the ride's too rough with the tall one. Um, and we, we try and work around it as that. And when you don't need as much load, you go going for something like this tall guy, this uh, sleeve style bag, it's, it's much, much better because the extended height to the compressed height comparison of this bag is much greater than the other two. This bag allows itself to roll over. You can see with this here, the bag actually is able to roll over itself and get to a much shorter compressed height over a long design length. So it gives us a lar much larger stroke. We actually have a kit specialized for the Toyota Comas that we have this bag in to get us a much larger stroke for guys who don't need as much load on the back of their trucks, but they want to keep their ride height when they go off road. But they still, they want to have a little bit of help in the back end but they want to keep their suspension travel for when they go off go off roading, and that's what these bags are ideally meant for. Yeah, and so when when you go looking at airbags, there's a couple of things you want to look for. Um, speci specifically, when we look at ours, we try and go for a nice solid aluminum end caps on each of them, just because it's a little bit better. They they are anodized to help with corrosion and deal with that galvanic corrosion that you sometimes see between dissimilar metals. Um, also having a nice aluminum end cap, we have all the features machined in it, so all our threads are machined in here. If you were to go for something composite or different, you have to put in a metal piece to do, act as your threads, which it can allow for possible leak paths or failure points. So we've gone for the full aluminum with the machining in it, just because it's a, a little bit better in, in our opinion. Um, and then we have our, our bag material itself, it's multi-layered with nylon reinforcement. It's really good um, as far as burst goes or resistant to any punctures. So, and then when we're looking at our, our bigger, heavy, double convoluted bags here, you can see that we have this nice support in the middle here. It's got uh, 20 support wires in the center. It just adds a little bit of strength to the girdle to help us prevent blowouts due to the longer length of the bag. As you can see on the shorter one, we don't have it. That's just the height of the bag itself isn't conducive to blows from that manner, whereas as you get taller, specifically for this style where it's a nice large bag, it A, prevents blowout that way, and B, also helps to keep the diameter small. Uh, this sleeve style, it does bulge out a fair bit when it gets fully pressurized, but due to the, sm the small diameter of the bag itself, it's not a, a large issue. When we get to this bag here, it's a six inch bag. If we weren't to have this girdle in the center, it would expand out to probably about seven and a half to eight inches without the support. So this helps keep the design size of the bag as narrow as possible while keeping a nice good strength to it. Well, thanks for joining us and watching our video of what are airbags and why you might need them. If you have any comments, questions, you can leave them in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you keep up to date with any new news with Packbreak, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook.